grouping allows you to organize your database in horizontal sections, whereas filters allow you to organize your database in a vertical manner. Many of you have been asking me to cover the new Notion grouping feature for you. So in this video, we're gonna see what's all the fuss about, and I'm gonna actually show you a practical example that I use to track my exercises, for example, and I think that you can get ideas from or inspiration from to create your own system. This is gonna be a short video, so let's get into it. As you see, I have a page here called Gym. So basically I purchased one of Jeff Nippard's programs for bodybuilding and weight loss. And actually that program is split into eight weeks. It's eight weeks with different body part exercises. And I had to also learn how to get familiar with those exercises and have all the YouTube videos for, for example, how to do those exercises all in one place. And I also wanted to track how much weight I'm using and, for example, the total work done. So what I did, I actually created a table in Notion with all the different types of bodybuilding exercises. So as you can see, this is the name of the exercise. So, for example, seated leg curl or hammer curl, etc. And then I created a type for it. So the type is like machine, easy bar, dumbbell, blah, blah, blah. Then in Jeff Nippard's program, for example, we have sets, reps, and RPE. RPE RPE stands for rate of perceiving exertion, which is basically intensity measurement from one to 10, 10 being almost to failure, one being super easy. And basically then I added these properties to my table. And for example, now if I'm at the gym and I wanna learn how to do single arm pull downs, I can always jump to the video and watch it right there and then. So I can actually jump on and see how he's actually done stuff. But one problem that I had is that I was doing the body part split program, but this table wouldn't show me everything I wanted to see at one glance. So it wouldn't actually show me the body part. So then what I did, I created another table called muscle groups. And as you can see, the muscle groups is nothing special. I just added some body parts from abs, necks, triceps, shoulders, back, blah, blah, blah. And I had the rating as to how good I feel like my body parts are. I put a measurement so that I can measure myself, which I do every month. And then I created a related exercises property that relates my muscle group database to my exercises database. And then what I did is I actually jumped into my exercises and grouped all of the exercises that were there based on body parts. Now I can see that for the group of my chest, I have all these different eight exercises here. And these three are the ones that are active and I'm currently doing in my current program. And these ones are also in the program, but I'm not doing them just yet. Maybe after four weeks, I have to switch up my programs. So all I have to do is to come deactivate one of them and activate another one instead. So this is where the grouping feature of Notion actually came into play and played a huge role for making this super simple for me at the gym. And the way I did that is actually I just jumped under grouping here, group by obviously the related field of muscle group, which is awesome because you can actually group everything by roll up properties or by related databases as well, which is absolutely awesome. It blows my mind that Notion can do this. And by the way, this is one of the reasons I'm not going to replace Notion with another tool because the databases are just so powerful. And all I did, yeah, basically group by muscle group, sort by manual because I would like to move them manually up and down based on the order that I would like to do them at the gym. I would hide empty groups. Right now, it doesn't matter. And as you can see, these are all the muscle groups that are here. And then the database that actually looked like a list, as you saw here, confusing all over the place. I didn't really understand what was going on. That converted into a database that I could actually understand and go over every section on this specific day. Now, there's one more thing that I wanted to solve, and that was I had eight exercises for the chest, but I wasn't doing eight exercises for the chest group for my week. So what I did instead is I added a new property called active and using this active property, I then filtered out the exercises that I'm not doing. So basically by just clicking on an active here, I actually created a new view to my table and using this view, then I only would see the active exercises for that specific week. And this is super, super powerful because at the gym, you don't want to carry a lot of things or a pencil and pen and paper. Then at the gym, I could just use my phone, I could listen to my music, and at the same time, after every set, I could see, okay, what weight did I put there, I can add it there, and I can also put my last set RPE in there, and if I at any point forgot how to do, for example, a dumbbell incline chest press, I could always click on a YouTube video that comes at a part of the Jeff Nippert's course and actually see what's it all about. So why is this even important that I'm showing you is that 
Before this grouping feature, I couldn't have done this. I should have just filtered everything and sorted them, but I would still see everything, all the exercises that I had to do in my view. And that just created a lot of clutter for me. And I didn't have this swim lanes or grouping. So the way I think about it is that grouping allows you to organize your database in horizontal sections, whereas filters allow you to organize your database in a vertical manner. So for example, if I filter everything that contains the chest, I would clearly not see any of the other groups, right? So this vertically removed some stuff. But if I now delete this again, I would see all the groups again horizontally. Now I could always obviously change the grouping as well here. And by changing the grouping, then I would change the horizontal organization of the whole database. I also want to give you another practical example. So for example, for my Organize and Optimize series, you know that I have projects and using this new feature, now I can group my projects based on the area they relate to. So as you can see right now in my active projects database, I have no grouping, so no horizontal organization. So all I can do is actually jump under grouping. Then I add a grouping based on the related area, let it load, and then I will obviously hide the one that doesn't have an area. I don't want to see that. And I would leave everything else. I can also leave the sort as alphabetical. You can reverse it or you can also make it manual. And I would also like to hide empty groups. The ones that do not have a project shouldn't even be in there. So now, as you can see, the area of nine to five has this project. The area of daily life admin has these projects. The area of health has these projects. The languages have these projects. Mindset has these and so on and so forth. I think you get the point. So this way at one glance as well, I can see what areas have what projects active and which ones are, for example, more important for me. So I can change my priority or energy level on them. One thing that you need to note though, when you organize your groupings in a horizontal way, if you have two different groups for the same same entry. So as you can see, I have the area of mindset and health for doing a seven day dopamine detox, that specific entry will show up under health, obviously, and under mindset. So this is just something that you need to make a note of. And if you don't want it to show up under both areas, then you just have to relate it to one area. One more thing that you need to note though, is that if you use the grouping feature and your database has a lot of information in it, the grouping feature actually might make your whole page loading quite slow. So my workaround for this is to actually put everything that I have under my page under these toggles. And the first time that you actually load your page, these toggles will not load what under them. So you only get what is on the page right now. And if you actually click on it, then it will start loading everything. So it actually speeds up loading your information from the web a bit faster. And obviously we know Notion is a bit slow when it comes to these things, but honestly, I just can't replace their databases, their relations and their template features that I know Obsidian or Evernote or other tools out there just don't have. So that's about it guys. If you want to know more about the program or specific details about this, let me know and I can make a video about it. I don't really want to make too many Notion tutorials. and This is not a Notion channel. And we're going to actually cover quite a lot of interesting topics coming soon about consistency, about mindset, about health. I'm actually getting awesome feedback on my first video that is now around 2,100 views, my first ever YouTube video. Honestly, I don't know how that got there. So if you think these things matter to you and you're interested in self-development, please leave a like, subscribe and turn the bell notification on so you get notified when the next video is out. See you in the next video. Peace.